Okay guys, it is Nico. I hope we hear well. I wanted to do a little reflection, a little podcast on a little reflection on one of the flagship topics that continues to flow a lot of ink and animate the markets, especially on everything that is microstructure. So everything is volume and liquidity, price action, especially price volatility. This is what I see in price action. So I wanted to bring a little reflection here on the basic postulate that I have for several years as you already know is that everything that is volume will precede the price movements and indeed by nature it is quite true in the sense that once you have a transaction of volume so comes in the tape it will be served so it will de facto have an impact on the price then either an impact zero it happens or a positive impact so that it means that it moves the price in the direction in which it Hits or is a negative impact say that one crushes it in the opposite one crushes it and one executes it a little below or above, in his favor of the price he wants. And so, I put this reflection because it is true that yes, volumes impact prices, of course. I would say by nature, and on the other hand, it is also necessary to understand that prices, price movements in particular, so volatility, Price movements will also have an impact on the flow of volume that enters and leaves the market. I will give you a very simple example, for example, stop loss, take profits, they will trigger as a hard market, they will trigger in relation to price movements. All that to say that the price movement itself, at least the price movement here is to be more precise the price movement so the price movement that we can qualify as a sell and also in terms of amplitude so as the general antique the price movement he too is in fact maybe just as much if it is no longer then I don't know it is a reflection that I open it is a debate I pose but the price movement itself will also impact the volume and the volume itself will re-impact the price movement so after. We are in a thing and that's why I think that the markets are if have such an exaggerated side so exaggerated every time we are never the balance in fact is always the balance because one is in imbalance because of the increase or after all regulations of prices and so the volume of prices that are followed by these, etc. So all that to say that we are ultimately, and that is why we are trading, we are ultimately in constant imbalance, we are on a constant imbalance. This is a bit of the beauty of the thing, It is that we are permanently in imbalance either up or down and we are therefore constantly also looking to rebalance what is normal to go back after imbalance and so all that to say that yes volumes precede prices but we are finally on a one is a system where volume against liquidity will make prices but also price will make volume. So the price will make liquidity in the sense where in some price zones it is very dangerous to offer liquidity or vice. Versa in some price zones it is very favorable and interesting to offer liquidity. You can imagine, for example, when the price collapses, when a price collapses and it starts to collapse and that it comes, for example, to break a large support and that it is known that it will continue to fall until the next support, well there, those who offer liquidity to buy, they are few. Why is? Because the price drops so fast, very quickly, that offer to buy liquidity when you are on a high point potentially and that is what creates the price movements. So yes the volumes precede the prices, yes the volumes impact the prices but as I said so the prices, the price movements will also impact the volumes that themselves will re-impact after the prices and for liquidity it is the same I think that liquidity will motivate the volume, liquidity also creates prices and on the other hand. The price movements will also have an impact on this liquidity on the state of liquidity in particular in terms of quantity since obviously depending on the price zone in which liquidity is working liquidity will not be the same and will not be so abundant that is why it is so complicated to buy in the market a low point or to sell in the market a high point because in these moments there and on these price zones there is a moment. And a history of price, always a history of space, a history of time. In these price zones and at those times, it is very difficult to sell the high point because it is the people who offer to buy, finally people, market makers who offer to buy on a high point are very few. They do so because they are obliged or they do so in very small amounts and that is why we are on the high point. That is why the price drops after because the smaller volume seller that presents will have a price because the liquidity at the bid is minimal because it is very dangerous to offer to the bid. To offer to buy liquidity when you are on a high point potentially and that is what creates the price movements. 
So here is all that is ultimately simple and complex at the same time and I think it should be considered as a system, as a trio really volume price liquidity. I think it's a trio that really impacts each other. You have to take all three at the same time. I think that's really, I think that's the key. I hope the sound was okay. Because I'm out there, but I think it shouldn't be bad. So I open the debate. I await your reactions. I will go a little further in the discussion later. Thanks to you. Thank you.